welcome to the LPKF booth here at InternetCon Japan. Uh, I'm joined by Florian Rock, who's the strategic business manager for this uh, new product we're going to look at. Welcome, Florian. Yes, welcome, Trevor. Thank you very much for having you here. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to show the new Step Stencil manufacturing technology with our Stencil Laser G6080. Excellent, excellent. Now, Step Stencils, of, co of course, have been around for a long time. I mean, people yes. use a lot of... Uh, usually electroforming or milling or other ways of doing it, uh, but you've come up with a very unique way of being able to use uh, lasers, a laser system for many companies have already got lasers in their factory already. Yes, that's true. Tell our viewers a little bit about how it works. Yes, um, so it's basically a pure welding technology where we use our stencil lasers for preparing step stencils of any mixture as well. So you can even use or you can combine step up and step down areas in one stencil. And how you do is basically quite quite simple. So first you start off with the base stencil. You take the material, might be 120 micrometer thickness of uh, standard stainless steel material, can also be fine grain material. So any stainless steel grade is uh, basically possible. Anyway, so you take the uh, base stencil material to the machine and you cut out the patches uh, or the area of the step first. Then you change the material, you go to the step material thickness, maybe you want to have a step up from 120 to 150 or even 180. So you basically you can take uh, 180 micrometer thick stainless steel as a next one and you cut out the uh, exact negative um, which is then the patch that is going to be welded inside the formally cut out area of the base stencil. Right. If you have prepared uh, the complete uh, setup then you, then you need to use a vacuum mm -hmm. to make sure that from the PCB side of the stencil, there is no difference in, in height between the base stencil and the step area, because uh, you want to have a very flat surface on the PCB to avoid any bleeding of uh, flux or even to have solder balls in strange places. So, I, I, just to explain to our viewers, underneath this stencil there is uh, a vacuum platen, as you can see from the, the gold areas underneath, uh, and the stencil goes down with the squeegee side facing up. Yes, exactly. First, the welding is done on the squeegee side. When this first step is uh, done, you turn over the complete setup and then you do a second weld from the PCB side. So you have a very sturdy and reliable connection <coughs> between the base stencil and the step areas as well. All right, so maybe I show how to set in the patches to the uh, base stencil. Yes, that would be a good idea. All Take right, it so away. Need to switch on the vacuum. So using a standard vacuum system here, we can hear it in the background. Yeah, it's an, uh, the vacuum is generated, or the low pressure is generated by an ejector. Mm -hmm. So you basically, you don't need to buy a vacuum pump, which from the investment point of view is uh, much higher compared to an ejector. You need to have uh, regular maintenance on that one. And also running cost for a vacuum pump is uh, higher. So we decided to go with an ejector, even though it means the uh, volume of air that is required is a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. But this uh, ejector also features an um, air saving module that shuts off the operation as soon as the vacuum is stable and at a low level. So then the consumption of air is reduced drastically. So it should not make a big impact on the uh, total consumption of compressed air. Fair enough. So we have our uh, step down and step up uh, cutouts basically yes. uh, lying over the areas uh, that have been vacuumed down so uh, now you're going to fit them into the into the into the holes yeah yeah that's true and uh, maybe one wonders uh, okay how do i know that i have an exact fit of the patch inside my base stencil but strange enough uh, you can hear a clicking noise um, if the patch material really is uh, pulled down onto the vacuum table. Um, I don't know if we can hear it uh, during this session here. Um, but what you basically do is you 
push in the base at uh, the step areas inside the base stencil. There was a slight click there as well, so maybe also use the big one again. There was also one. You can also already hear the difference in air flow already yes. a little bit. It's already getting. You can you can hear that there's some air movement uh, beneath the sheet, maybe here in this area. Mm -hmm. And also, as soon as I have uh, fit in all the patches, uh, we can hear. You hear the air stopping basically. The ejector or, or, stopping to provide uh, a lot of um, vacuum. Especially the last patches, they are already you can feel some good resistance with your fingers. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was the last click, and now there, there you go. And of course, the ejector has gone quiet. It's gone quiet because now there is no like loss of vacuum because of open patches or, or because of open areas. But I can turn it on very easily again if I lift it up. Oh yes, you, can, you can hear it quite clearly. So, we, we, uh, so these are the, the different uh, patches I've put in. And then this whole table goes into the laser system for welding. That's right. You put the complete setup as it is now into the stencil laser. Then you level the frame or the table. And then you start welding uh, first again on the squeegee side. But for doing so, you need some fiducials. Uh, we put in some very nice fiducials here. Uh, you can maybe see some uh, dots. No, it's really only like with a felt pen to, to explaining um, that you can also use the fiducials or you put the fiducials inside a fairly larger aperture, which will be cut out in the end uh, with the complete uh, apertures so that you don't have an additional hole uh, for the fiducials inside the stencil through which also the paste would be printed. You don't want to have that. That would be like excess paste somewhere on the board, uh, and that's absolutely not good. So we need fiducials anyway to line up the laser machine to the contour of the patches, so that we exactly spot or weld together both materials. And for that, you need to have fiducials. And the fiducials also cannot be only engraved from the squeegee side, for example, because when the first welding step at the squeegee side, on the squeegee side, is finished. You have to turn, you, you take out the table again out of the system and you turn over the uh, stencil to, so that the PCB side is showing, uh, is up, up face now. Because you have to weld from both sides. Exactly. We have to both, we do the welding on both sides because it's giving even a stronger, um, stronger bond basically. It's giving a stronger bond base between step area and standard stencil so and then you need to use again the same fiducials and as in the first welding step so of that's course. the reason to have really through holes as a fiducial and you want to cover them up in larger apertures you cut out in the end anyway right, right. now you when you look at this in cross section basically you're you're welding down about 25 microns on each side uh, yeah, uh, so typically uh, you mentioned uh, off camera before that, that you had a, a minimum of about 50 I believe and a maximum of about 100 microns that you could you yes. could the, uh, the absolute minimum thickness on a step down patch uh, is a 50 micrometer mm -hmm. and the maximum height difference is uh, about one is 100 micrometer in between these uh, limitations you can choose any thickness combination you like and as I said you can use any strange shape as you can see here on these angled things um, or on this it's an odd form shape yeah odd form shape mm -hmm. circular shapes as well um, even if it's under an angle you can also reliably weld everything together um, so you have no limitations from the geometry point of view but of course from the thickness point of view so minimum absolute minimum step down thickness 50 micron and the maximum difference in step heights or in, in heights is 100. So what happens with people who have already got um, 
stencils that are in frames and this type of thing? How, how do you work with that? Right. So, for sure, uh, also we need to have a solution for framed stencils, especially they are still very much used in Japan. So, we also prepared a solution for that. Uh, first, we need to, I can, I can show you, with uh, the taking away these bars. For example, for a 29 inch frame, we don't need these bars. Um, so I will, yeah, I will take out the big one. So, for example, this is also a um, stencil for demonstration purposes. Of course, it also features different step sizes, different heights, going up and down any odd shapes you can see again and please remember the first welding step is always with the squeegee side facing up so the first step even for the frame stencils is is in this uh, configuration so we have a good contact between the material and the vacuum table but of course for the second welding step from the PCB side, what happens then is when you turn over the frame, you now have an offset between the metal and the vacuum table, which is at the level of the black material here. So what we can do, or what we do in that case is, we also take the, uh, the vacuum table to the same level as the uh, stencil material, so we have to offset the thickness of the profile of the frame. Okay. And this offset is easy done. So these these are um, spacers, maybe. Uh, you would call them? Yeah, um, these are risers yeah. and they are having the exact height of the frame profile of the frame stencil. Okay. So in this case it's a 40 millimeter um, riser and it's very easy to pull up the uh, complete... So you pull up the vacuum table itself to sit on top of these risers exactly. that brings it up to the same level as the, as the yes. uh, stencil that's got the, that's within the frame. That's true. That's exactly the solution we uh, offer for framed stencils. Okay. And do, do you accommodate different heights? Yes, we also accommodate different heights. It's to manufacture such a part is uh, fairly easy. So we, uh, as um, standard equipment, we also provide we also provide the uh, 30 millimeter profile heights. But as I said, so. These risers can machine to fit any profile height of uh, framed stencils. Well, you know, Florian, this is a great system because I mean, most of these companies already have a laser in house. Yes, um, sure. So it's just really the additional tooling and, and, and the vacuum system yes. that they have to invest in. Um, what are the other benefits? I mean, what sort of um, time benefits and things like that do you get out of this? Sure. Yeah, and this is the most uh, important question, actually. Why are our customers asking us for a better solution for making step stencils? Because, again, when you take a look back at uh, the etching solution or the electroforming solution or even mechanical milling, it takes a lot of resources. resources. May it be time when you need to ship the material and the data to the etching house um, or to prepare the mandrel for electroforming, or you need to use a lot of drill bits for mechanically milling down the complete area it's just to let the uh, step up stand above the, the rest of the material. Um, and this was our motivation to speed up the process, to offer a faster way of manufacturing so that even uh, same day deliveries of step stencils become possible. So for preparing a standard, st a standard step stencil from the base material to the patches to finally cut the stencil as well, it's uh, no more than one hour. Wow. So maybe, maybe two hours 
when you first get into contact with the customer, preparing all the data, getting all the material, getting all the order process uh, working until you can call any uh, delivery company and tell them, hey, please pick up the stencil and bring it to there. It's a lot faster than three days doing electroforming. <laughs> it's very much faster, so yeah. And this is, this is one way we believe that is very effective for our customers, but we don't say it's the only way. So, of course, all the other possibilities, they have still their right to be there and right to be used, but we have a good feeling towards that this is being to be quite a popular solution. Certainly a great time saver and it, it looks, I would guess, relatively inexpensive to add all this on when you've already got your, your lasers in place. Sure. Yeah. Especially, yeah, when you compare to a very specialized milling machine, yeah. uh, the invest is very, very much lower and very cost efficient, especially for customers who already own their own stencil laser. And presumably there's an element of training goes with this when you, when you install one. Yes, um, that's, that's a good point, Trevor. Um, basically, the whole expertise lies within data preparation and also the setting of laser parameters or welding parameters more. Uh, for the customer to be able to cover all these new things, we, of course, offer training from anywhere between one day of application training in case the customer is already very, very firm with data preparation up to three days, for example, as well. But also, for sure, we provide complete tool libraries where all laser parameters are already preset. So it's making it even more easier for the companies to implement it into their already existing manufacturing flow. Well, Florian, I think it's a fantastic system. Uh, I think you did a very good job of demonstrating it to us, so thank you very much for that. Uh, and uh, thank you for joining us today. Yes, and thank you very much for being here and giving us the chance to introduce this new technology of step stencil welding.